Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. It's now time to discuss the latest with the quantum stocks, especially after we saw a massive pullback last week and a substantial rally today on the back of commentary from Microsoft that declared this year to be the year that we become quantum ready. So joining me now is Kevin Green, senior markets correspondent, to talk more about this. Kevin, I will say that when I was first sort of parsing through CEO Jensen Wong's commentary last week that sent all these stocks in sort of disarray, I was somewhat agreeing with him, and then I went back into the, these those that are definitely more well-minded about quantum theory than I. And there is a lot of this technology that does already exist. It's not necessarily a 15, 20-year timeline. So I, I'm curious your thoughts there and then some of the outlook for these names. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, uh, the comments last week uh, from Jensen Wong was actually very interesting. I mean, I think there's a realistic aspect as to, uh, you know, trying to implement this on a uh, a very large scale, and right now that is very hard to do, not only just because the technology itself or even just the, the, the internals of quantum computing is, is still in its infancy stages, but you still have some major hurdles, especially when it comes to cooling, and that has been a problem. Uh, but once again, I mean, there's still some optimism. AI, you know, a couple of years ago, when you're looking at generative AI, that was something that a lot of uh, these tech CEOs thought that would take a very long time in order for it to be applicable to everyday life, and now, you know, ChatGPT is, is something that everybody kind of uses or Gronk. So, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we did see a, a pretty significant sell-off in the quantum stocks. But Microsoft is saying uh, be prepared uh, for uh, support when it comes to the quantum computing space here. Uh, and they do believe that a significant amount of development is going to take place in 2025, and they want to be on the forefront of that. So you are seeing a nice little rebound in stocks like IonQ or if, you, if you're looking at D-Wave or anything of that nature, uh, we are seeing a nice bounce. I think that also kind of coincides with the, the C, uh, CPI print and just the overall enthusiasm and risk on nature of the market. But uh, Microsoft seems like it's going to be ready. And, and you're right, there is applications that are out there uh, that's actually used on a commercial basis, but it's not to the point where, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, companies really want to see it, uh, you know, moving forward. You know, KG, uh, a few weeks ago, I was back home over the holidays and one of my friends lets me know, you know, I got a significant number of shares in this RGTI company at under a dollar uh, for, a, for a cost basis, and he's, you know, all excited for good reason. Stock was like 15, 20. Um, and first off, you know, he's asking questions. We, we can't help you. We can't give advice. Talk to a financial advisor for something like that. But the thing that really stuck out to me and, uh, is that these stocks are just tremendously high beta at the moment. And so when I see a move like this today, it's going to be naturally tied to something like Microsoft today, and perhaps some of the reason is... Uh, but when you see these movements, uh, KG, some of this might just be the fact that the market's up today, too. So when you see these names that are sort, sort of speculative and futuristic, uh, like mu much of these uh, quantum computing names are, um, you know, how, how does one stomach this volatility if they're involved? And uh, at, at what point uh, do you feel like you missed the boat if you're not? Yeah, I think uh, understanding the mechanics of markets is really key here, Alex. Like, as you know, a lot of these stocks are on a relative basis fairly low float. So it doesn't really take much to really move the prices higher. Uh, some of them have been targeted uh, for, for short selling as well. So we might be seeing a little bit of a squeeze taking place. And a lot of these stocks have also now have uh, you know, weekly options being traded on them. So you're getting the options flows. That's also kind of waking up market makers. I think if you're kind of looking at quantum computing uh, as a whole, you know, any type of new industry uh, that is expanding, it's probably best to try to diversify as much as you possibly can. Maybe you don't pick that one winner, winner, but maybe you have just overall exposure. And if you are a believer that rising tides are going to lift all boats, uh, then you could actually have some exposure that way. And so uh, I think that's kind of how to really manage it. And if you're not able to kind of stomach the volatility, then you have to look at certain strategies, potentially in the option world, to be able to uh, have some upside exposure, but also kind of limit, limit the, the overall principle that you're putting up uh, for these investments. Once again, it, it, and I think you have to also look at it as a ground up type of industry right now. Who is going to be able to provide the nuts and bolts? This is exactly what we're seeing for artificial intelligence right now. Uh, and I think that's going to be the same way when it comes to quantum computing. And if we are able to see it perfected over the next couple of years or 10 years from now, it's going to be a game changer. And I think the biggest companies that are going to actually be at risk for that, unfortunately, is going to be cybersecurity stocks and, and cybersecurity as a whole, because uh, it's going to completely do away with two-factor authentication and a lot of the methods that we use right now to secure um, sensitive information. 
Okay, and I'm curious on, on that note, because that's a great point, and then the disruption that we'll see from this. And I know there's been some whisperings about how this could impact the crypto world, which is, this is far above my head, frankly, but do you have any thoughts on that? Because that definitely does garner some attention when we talk quantum computing. Yeah, there could be a, an issue there when it comes to the crypto wallets. Uh, and the reason why, you know, if you're looking at it from a theoretical basis, these quantum computing systems basically are doing like, uh, uh, they're processing at a lot more of a faster rate, if you will, than a traditional or a you know, computer. Um, so instead of having like one processor, imagine having 100,000 processors that are able to, to do a function at, at one single point in time. That's really where it, it becomes a problem when it comes to cybersecurity and, and really trying to like jailbreak um, you know, crisp, crypto wallets and stuff like that. Like there is going to be a concern about that. So the, 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 I guess the concern then, just to kind of say it in plain uh, terms then, KG, is that this encryption would be broken by some supercomputing, this quantum computing could do the math and that would need it to kind of reverse engineer the security and then that stuff yeah. would be exposed. Um, who knows? I mean, that's yeah. potentially a risk, but it doesn't seem like a risk that's here today, uh, but something to think about uh, into the future. KG, appreciate it as always, uh, a look at the names that are on the move in the quantum computing space.